First umbilical tower there uh, separating from the booster. Thirty seconds now until launch. Ground umbilical to the third stage has been disconnected, and in just a moment, the second umbilical tower will separate. Power on board. There's the second tower. Command for ignition, oxygen. Launch command has been issued. Seven, six, five, four, three. Two, one. Engine turbo pump at speed. Engines at maximum thrust. Lift off. And there is lift off of the Soyuz MS-10 to the International Space Station, carrying Nick Haig and Alexei Ovchinin to the orbital complex. This again is Nick Haig's first time to uh, launch to space, and Alexei Ovchinin's second. Hearing good first stage performance for the Soyuz, delivering 930,000 pounds of thrust from its four boosters and single engine. Again, the first stage of the Soyuz measures 68 feet in length and 24 feet in diameter. It's burning liquid fuel for the first two minutes and six seconds of flight. Sixty seconds into the flight. The pressure in the chamber is nominal. For lock one, copy. Uh, everything is well on board. They're feeling well. Thank you. Copy. Everything proceeding as uh, intended for today's flight. Now just a little over a minute into it. The velocity of the Soyuz is about 1,100 miles per hour. View here of the crew inside the Soyuz now making their way to the International Space Station. Nick Haig there at the top of the screen and Alexei Ovchinin at the bottom. View here of the Soyuz making its way into space. Everything looking good, proceeding nominally. And we have the escape tower for the Soyuz now jettisoned. Everything continuing nominally. The four strap on boosters have been jettisoned and they've completed their job, dropped away at an altitude of 28 statute miles. Soyuz traveling about 3,000, uh, 3,350 miles an hour. Is it emergency booster two minutes, 45 seconds, the uh, emergency, the failure of the booster? Failure of the booster. BS, yes, BS. Separation. Enable power. One hundred ninety seconds into the flight, so he's traveling in, about forty seven hundred miles per hour. Don't be in a hurry. Burlaki, copy. We are in uh, weightlessness, you know, according to our sensations. Stand by. Burlaki, do you have F1 illuminated? 11.42.17, failure. 11.42.17 is the time of the failure. F1 on SP is illuminated. Copy. Copy. 
головной отсекатель сошел у нас. See the shroud is separated, the screw is feeling well, everything is well on board. We have roots uh, in our hands and the power is on. Copy. So what are the recommendations of the ground? What about the separation? Did the separation go through? Yes, it did. 11.42.55. Did you deactivate root power? No. Uh, did you activate the root power? Yes, the root power is on. O N. Now, please send the S command. Ballistic uh, descent command is sent from root controller. Copy. 11.45.30. The S has been sent. We have the indicator illuminated. The overload has started. Yes, we are getting ready for the deload. Time 12.46, Geload is 6.7. Copy. We feeling rotation. The Geload is going down. 18.46.20, Geload is 2.72 and going down. Copy, Burlakim. So tighten the strap in work. Hearing there that uh, there has been uh, an issue with the booster and we're standing by for information as we continue to get it from the Russian flight control team, but everything seems to be fine with the crew. We had good calm with them and they are okay. We continue to wait for more information. Let's go to page 32, 3-2. Burlaki, launch lead. Burlaki launch lead. Team here in Mission Control is working with their counterparts in Russia, getting more information on the uh, issue with the booster that uh, has changed today's launch plan. Um, getting more information, which we will provide as, as soon as we have a little bit more, but uh, you're seeing a live view of the control team working here, led by Flight Director Mary Lawrence. Burlaki launch lead.
what are like your launch leads? Would like your launch lead. What like your launch lead? Continuing to see here a live view from the Mission Control Center here in Houston where the team was following along with today's Soyuz MS-10 launch. Uh, that launch did have a problem with the, the booster a few seconds after the first stage separation. And uh, we can confirm now that the crew ha has started to go into the ballistic descent mode. They'll be going in on a sharp landing today. I think uh, it'll be 
coming up uh, fairly shortly. Uh, and we're continuing to get more information from our counterparts at the Roscosmos Space Agency as we uh, learn more about today's uh, activities and what, what to expect next as the crew does go through this ballistic descent mode. This is Mission Control Houston. The uh, rescue, search and rescue forces who uh, took off at uh, 3.55 a.m. Central Time from Baikonur, uh, expected to reach the area where uh, the Soyuz MS-10 descended uh, at about an hour and a half later, so we're about 30 minutes into that flight. Uh, we are hearing already that the forces are in contact with uh, Nick Haig and Alexei Ovchinin on board the Soyuz, and uh, initial reports are that they are in good condition. Uh, we will stand by for more, but again, they expected to take about an hour and a half to reach the region where the Soyuz landed east of Jessica's gone, following a bal ballistic descent landing that took place after an issue with today's 3.40 a.m. Central Time launch. The ballistic descent does mean that the uh, Soyuz module comes in uh, more steeply than it would on a normal landing trajectory, which means that the crew is uh, subjected to higher G-forces during the descent, but it is uh, a, known, uh, a known mode of uh, descent that uh, crew members have gone through before. Again, uh, that took place uh, following today's 3.40 a.m. Central Time launch of the Soyuz MS-10. And uh, the crew on board, Nick Haig and Alexei Ochinin, have been in contact with the rescue forces, which are on their way to the landing site, uh, expected to reach it probably uh, uh, still about an hour from now.